materials, and there's also usage of Symbian in mass media. I put mass media here in quotation marks because if you talk about Symbian, we don't talk about millions of speakers, but we talk about several hundreds or um, at most maybe 2,000 if you count. Really, everybody has a little Symbian. And what I want to do now is I want to show you an example of language use of Luzern Symbian in, in mass media, which is here a TV service, um, TV news. And just a couple of minutes to give you an idea of yeah, what Symbian is and how the Symbian culture presents itself. A manifestazione può essere che di marco di seggiare, si dà già a causa di un punto di nazze, un modo che è di marco, può dare le svolte, può seggiare. Allora, di abiti al decimbra, dal camogo folgrato dal comitato brava parte, anche per vita fieri. Chi va a un buon conto. Se sono in darchente, a spezzone mi darchaiten, un sono in drena, in comitato, può vitalcere su un darchaiten, buon bellissimo. Anzunta non lo svolse, da corvo salvi, sa presum coi di Kirch, un da noi sta da un sega di Auslevo, buon documentazione centrum, Lusera. Da Augusto Petris, ex borgizza, buon corvo salvi, sa trasgeredet pitus in da Zare Summa. Ich bin a Zare, ich komme in Kölner Wander Wander Zare, Zare ist a Kladdorf, wir haben eine Variale, sind 400 Wohnungen. Wir singen Isara Lieder in der Wiesen Zara Zara Sprache. Seit Liedern, alten Liedern, das kommen, das kommen, waren, waren alten, neu waren alten, waren in den Eltern. Seit Wörtern wurden uns getrunken, große, schöne Größe in in der Wiesen. Ist der Rebarras ein Wunsch, Projekt, kultivare la meraviglia, wo da bisogn Kurse ha gemacht, zu erkennen Leid, wo überall a Susen, au a Kumbitungshaus. Al Sartun Sponsor von Herbest Monas Settembre ist es gehalten, das zweite Treffen von Projekt Kultivare la Meraviglia. Wo der Giulio Boschetto? I think this is enough. Um, that's Simran. And um, I want to underline two aspects. One is here the real multilingual situation. Because we had here a uh, Simbian speaker, uh, present, presenter here of the, of the news, and um, I spoke uh, uh, Simbian, and, uh, and then we have the Italian subtitles. Then we had uh, this guy from, I don't know whether you got it or not, from Zare, uh, Sauris, um, who used another uh, German minority language, uh, which is also closer to the German standard. Standard German, maybe you understood a little bit uh, from what uh, the second guy said. Whereas, I guess uh, nobody understood Simri because it's quite quite distant from Standard German. And um, and then you you saw also that there is uh, that they write not, that they write in Italian. So we had uh, Italian written uh, materials in, in this. In this video, so this is one aspect which, which is typical for a similar language situation. The second one is that um, I think these um, uh, presentations here um, 
they are quite self-referential because it's not that they only talk in Symbian, but uh, the issues here, they are all Symbian or minority culture related. That's another, let's say, sociolinguistic aspect of this minority culture. Okay, this is just to give you an idea of what we are now talking about, what the morphosyntax is concerned, and uh, Section 2 data sources here, I don't want to go into detail, here you see my data and I just want to point out that for the 13 and communities and for Luzern, documentation starts only at the end or even at the beginning of the 20th century. So the historical depth of the documentation is available only for the seven communities simply in which you see here uh, 17th century, uh, which is so-called first catechism from 1602. So what we already saw as, as a year, that's the beginning of the uh, Symbian documentation. And uh, this uh, difference is a result of the fact that Symbian only in the seven communities was recognized as official language and as I said before, was a written language. And these historical, doc historical documentations are necessarily written documentation. That's why the uh, language change study focuses on seven communities. Similar. Okay, uh, now we come to the description of the, um, of the phenomenon that we are talking about here, typological features of possessive noun constructions in German and Italian. It turned out that uh, there are three criteria which are sufficient for describing um, the morphosyntactic change in Symbian and to answer to the question whether um, today's constructions are the result of transfer from Italian or not. And here you see these uh, three criteria. I will now start to introduce them using the standard German. So we go to the first one, and the first criterion is um, which are the agreement features which are marked on the possessive elements. And here we have to say first of all that we have here a multiple, so-called multiple controllers agreement. And this means that the target, and the target is the possessive element, here this one has two controllers. One controller is, uh, this is my right, <coughs> is um, the head noun and the features of the head noun, they are marked, marked right here, they are coded um, in the suffix of the possessive element. In green color, we have here the features controlled by the um, possessor and they are called in the base of the possessive element. Now we have here a pronoun, third, sing, uh, third person, uh, singular feminine. And this possessor requires a base, which in standard German is ear. It's for the th a third person, a singular feminine. Uh, if we had here a masculine pronoun, uh, then uh, the base uh, was um, not ear, but sein. So schematically, this means that the possessor controls person, number, and gender, and determines the choice of a base, which is E in this case, whereas the head noun controls case, number, and gender coded in the suffix of the possessive element. Okay. Uh, note that the gender here, the gender, possessor's gender is um, marked on the possessive uh, only in the case of the third person singular, whereas in the plural and in the first and second person there is no uh, possessor gender in the possessive element. Okay, that's the first criteria. The second one is the question, what is the location of the agreement features of the head now? And I already said this uh, location is the possessive element itself or the suffix of the possessive element. 
third criterion is the possessive element definiteness inducing or definiteness unspecific. And what is definiteness inducing? If we take a, a noun phrase like Tochter, and we put in the possessive element as in to, ihrer Tochter, her daughter, and this noun phrase in German and in English it's the same situation becomes definite. And that's why we call the uh, possessives in German definiteness inducing. They bring the definiteness in in the, in the nominal phrase. And um, therefore, also, articles and possessives are in complementary distribution in German. Look at number 3a, we have a definite article, der, ihrer Tochter, and in b, an indefinite article, einer, ihrer Tochter. Um, both constructions are ungrammatical in German. It would be the same case in English, by the way. Uh, if we want to make a um, Possessive noun construction indefinite, we have to choose a completely different construction. You see this construction in four. This is basically a cardinal number inflected in German, specified by a genitive plural. Uh, the point is that it's completely different and you cannot make it indefinite because the possessive element is definitely induced. So these are the three criteria. You have to remember them. I now show, I know, uh, show them for Italian. In Italian, uh, like in German, we have this multiple uh, controllers agreement. However, there are differences. And uh, <coughs> one difference um, is uh, the case, uh, morphological case. There is no case. If you look here, uh, right now, you see that we have gender and we have number, but we don't have case. We have then differences that regard the green features marked in green, so the possessor side, uh, because in the third person singular, we don't have a gender specification possessive element. Yeah, we have here two different genders. We have here the third singular uh, feminine pronoun, Ella, and in B, the third uh, singular masculine pronoun, Ei. But the possessive element, the base of the possessive element is the same, it's always the base, su. And that's why in green, there's only third singular and not feminine, which is not an agreement feature in Italian. The second uh, difference uh, regards the third person plural. In standard Italian, uh, the possessor controls the possessive's number with the um, element loro. No? Loro contano alla loro amica. Um, however, this word loro is a quite recent innovation uh, in uh, the, um, the literary, Italian literary uh, language, a standard language. Neither old Italian nor uh, most um, today's dialects have this element. Um, in most dialects, we have no agreement with possessors. Number, we have constructions like in seven. So seven is not really dialect, but um, the dialects work like this. We have here the um, plural pronoun, S, and here a singular uh, pronoun, A, E. But the base here is always this SU. And here you see that only the third person is the agreement feature. We don't have gender, we don't have number. Theoretically, that's the situation. So the head noun controls number and gender. The possessor controls person. And in the first and second person, also number. In the third person, usually the possessor does not control number. Second criterion, what is the location? of the agreement features of the head noun. In Italian, the uh, plural and uh, so the number and the gender uh, um, category, they have two uh, exponents. They are marked on the suffix, as in German, but <coughs> also on the article, on the suffix of the article. 
criterion is the possessive element in Italian definiteness inducing or definiteness uh, unspecific? And the answer is it is definiteness, uh, definiteness unspecific and consequently uh, the uh, element can be combined with both articles. In 9 you see a definite article, la sua amica, and then 10 you see an indefinite article. It's the, uh, exactly the same syntactic construction, just that we have the definite article in the first uh, sentence and the indefinite in the second sentence. Yeah. Um, there are some exceptions, uh, I skip them now. Uh, we can agree uh, on the names for relatives. If you are interested in this issue, we can maybe come back to this in the discussion. Uh, here in the um, intermediate summary, uh, you see that uh, <coughs> Italian and German possessive noun constructions are quite different. They differ with respect to all three criteria, if you, uh, as you see here. And this is uh, methodolo uh, methodolo methodologically a very uh, felicitous effect because this, um, these clear differences um, make uh, possessive noun constructions uh, very suitable for studying the effects of language contact because we know uh, when we have a certain feature where it comes from or where it maybe <coughs> goes to. Big differences, and this for us is an advantage. Okay. Now we are at the beginning of section number four. As I said, um, the main set uh, is empirical uh, section, reconstruction of the diachrony of possessive noun constructions in seven communities. Symbrian. And here we see the diachronic steps. We have uh, four periods totaling more than 300 years from 1602, so the first uh, record of Simeon, until 1926, the so called Venka questionnaire. And uh, we go directly to the first source the so-called first catechism in a religious text and um, this text is a word-by-word -word translation of an Italian source text and for this reason I put here on the slide not only Simon but also Italian so this Italian that you see here is not a modern translation but uh, that's uh, historical Italian from the, <coughs> of the 17th uh, century and we see here two types of uh, Possessive noun constructions we see in 13. A Simian construction without article, so you have to get here. And in 14, you see a Simian construction with an article, like in Italian. However, in 14, I think we have a quite weak data because the article that we see here may be, may be the effect of a Word by word translation from Italian. Whereas in 13, I think we have guaranteed some certain text because here we don't have an article against the Italian source text. So it's a contrast that tells us which is more reliable as data. Um, if we look at the counts here, we uh, have a confirmation of this impression because we see that 95% of the occurrences are constructions without article. Whereas only 5% or 6 constructions uh, show an article, but uh, these are doubt this is doubtful. These are doubtful data. That's the starting point. Uh, for the 18th century, uh, we, we don't have um, a longer text, but there is a grammar. It's the first grammar of Simeon, written by Girardo Slaviero around um, um, seven, 1740. And it's a grammar which is written in Italian. And uh, therefore, we have a paradigm table uh, that features both the 
Simian anti-Italian forms. And um, this paradigm tells us that the constructions without uh, article um, are still the default case also in the 18th century because we find them everywhere. Also in paradigm cells, in which we have here on the Italian side, constructions with articles, i miei, al mio, i miei, and so on. Um, there is a footnote, and uh, this footnote says that article usage is possible, but with a special meaning. It's a very important footnote, but I uh, will not discuss it now. We will come back to it later in my third section. We now uh, proceed to the 19th century. And in the 19th century, we have first this text called Novena. It's also a religious text, so it's mostly from the re religious sphere that these texts are taken or texts are available. And um, the so-called Novena uh, probably has also an Italian source, but it's not a word-by-word -word translation. And uh, what we see here is uh, that we have both types in 15. You see the construction without article. In 16, with article. If you look at the numbers here, uh, we see, however, an interesting evolution because the constructions with the article, here in the last column, we show it here increase from 5% to to 33%, so a third of the occurrences they have an article. And, um, and the tendency that we see here in this numerical data is further supported by a um, example um, here. by the comparison of uh, 15 and 16, because <coughs> 16, uh, 16 can be uh, considered the innovative example, um, we see uh, that, um, that the agreement feature uh, moves, shifts from the uh, possessive element uh, to the article. So that's an interesting observation that we will come back to later. In 16, a possessive element and head noun are not in agreement. The agreement is between the article and, and the head. We have a, a catechism also in the 19th century, the so called second catechism. It's the same kind of text, so word by word translation from Italian to Syrian. And here we see further increase from 33 to 41 percent and um, we see also this year um, example number 17 and in this example we see um, an article in Symbian against an Italian source construction without article and please remember the example from the, from the, from the first catechism we have in the first uh, catechism an example in the Italian source text and no example in, in uh, sorry, an article in the Italian source and no article in the Symbian translation. And um, I consider this a strong evidence for constructions um, without article as the Symbian default. Here we have the opposite case. We have in Symbian an article against an Italian source text without article. And so this, uh, from my point of view, is uh, evidence for considering the constructions with article in this period already something like the Symbian uh, default, although we have only 41% of occurrences in the day. The end, final stage, uh, so-called Brinkart questionnaire. And this is a standard questionnaire in German dialectology. Not so many occurrences, 10, ten possessive noun constructions. But um, the striking fact is that all of them have, have, uh, have an article. 
So there are no article, less constructions left. So in some, what we see here is a, I think, quite clear evolution from a situation that I would like to call never article in 1602 to a situation always article in 1926. Uh, roughly speaking, at least. And um, with this result, we now proceed to <coughs> the theoretic part, to the morphosyntactic structure of possessive noun constructions in similar. And um, here the objective is a syntactic model for these constructions. And the point of departure is, again, the list of the criteria that we used for the German and Italian. In red here, I put again the features which are controlled by the head noun. And we see, we see here two agreement, two agreement types. Uh, example 19 represents first and second person plural possessives and here we see that all possible agreement features are realized just as in German so the um, gender feature masculine um, number number feature singular and case feature dated all coded in the uh, suffix of the possessive Whereas in 18, which is uh, third person possessives, we have no agreement at all marked on the possessive. We have this element here, sign, in which the agreement changes in the red, whereas we have um, agreement with the article word. In green, we see the features which are controlled by the processor. In 18, uh, the processor controls only person, only the third person, neither number nor gender. In 19, a second person plural processor, which is outside uh, the uh, PP, I represented here on the slide, controls both uh, person and uh, number. So if we now compare the situation in Simria to um, um, German and Italian, we see that on the one hand, uh, in Simria we have more structural possibilities for agreement marking than in Italian, because uh, here in the second plural, second person plural, um, we have agreement with case, number and gender, which is impossible in Italian. But on the other hand, these possibilities are less used or less realized in Simbian with respect to Italian, because in the, here in the third person, we, we don't have head noun agreement features at all on the possessive element. So um, the agreement relations and their realization, the realization uh, depends on the context, depends on the possessive person first, second, or third first. Second criterion, uh, location of agreement of the agreement feature of the head noun. And uh, here uh, we have various possibilities in Simeon. So the situation is not so homogeneous, but there is a strong tendency to mark the um, agreement features only um, on the article, as you see here in example number. And um, so you have, we have in Symbian a specific, uh, let's say, uh, pattern, agreement pattern. On the possessive element, we have no agreement marking. On article, yes. Whereas we have in German the other way around. We have yes on possessive, no on article. And in Italian, we have two times yes, yes, marking on possessive, and yes also marking on article. Okay. Finally, 
third um, criterion, definiteness. Here in um, example 21, it seems um, at first glance that we have definiteness in unspecific uh, possessive element because we have an article like in Italian. But I think that's not true, but uh, the opposite is true. I think that um, possessive elements in Symbian are possessive uh, definiteness inducing like in German. And uh, the main reason for this assumption is basically that the indefinite article in Symbian is excluded. You cannot substitute the inde an indefinite article here in 21b for a definite article. This gives us an <coughs> ungrammatical structure does not exist. And there is an interesting analogy in another Germanic language, which is Norwegian. Like in Simbrian, also in Norwegian, um, possessive um, elements may co-occur with definite articles, as you see here in 21a. Not always, but it's possible. Um, uh, but it, it cannot occur with indefinite articles. Uh, 22b is ungrammatical in Norwegian, just in the way it's ungrammatical in Cimbrian. And why? Why is this so? I think uh, the explanation is um, that the specification of indefiniteness that we see here or here is simply incompatible with the uh, specification of definiteness in the possessive element. Or uh, if we want to say it the other way <coughs> around, the impossibility uh, of um, the indefinite article testifies that we have a definiteness feature in the possessive and that the possessive element is indeed <coughs> definiteness inducing. Hence we have in constructions like uh, 221, uh, uh, 20, 21a and 22a, we have a double expression of definiteness. They are both on uh, the article and on the possessive element. Now the question is how can we model this double expression of definiteness? And here Sifonu, um, who uh, worked on Norwegian, sim simply calls this fact definiteness correspondence, or you can also say it's a kind of definiteness concord. Um, I'm not very happy with this because that's not an explanation, that's uh, simply a description of what's the fact so that we have two exponents of this definiteness. I prefer another approach and um, for this approach I want to go back to Slaviero's footnote that I hinted at before. So the grammar Saviero, uh, 1740, and um, what is the footnote saying? It's saying that um, a similar construction without article meine Liban corresponds to uh, the Italian construction with article i miei libri, which means basically my books. Whereas the similar construction with article the mein Liban corresponds to an Italian construction with the, uh, the element que, que uh, which is a demonstrative pronoun. It's the so called distal demonstrative pronoun in Italian, and corresponds more or less to uh, the English um, demonstrative those. And um, inspired by this uh, indication, which is Really interesting because it's from uh, 1740. Yeah. I would uh, interpret the article word in Simran here not as an article but as a demonstrative pronoun, as a demonstrative pronoun. <coughs> and uh, based on this, I would like to propose this uh, structure, this model <coughs> for the possessive noun constructions in Simran. And um, what do we see here? It's a tree-like construction, or a tree, const 
tree structure, but uh, I use this uh, as a visualization for showing uh, the following things. We have here the possessive element, which uh, basically moves from a original with original position in a possessive phrase, you can call it like this, in a definiteness phrase. And there it becomes definiteness inducing. So this position is simply saying that the possessive element is definiteness inducing. And this definiteness phrase is a, a complement of a demonstrative phrase. This model here is suitable not only for the situation in the 20th century southern communities assembly <coughs> constructions with Arctic but it's suitable also for constructions without article or with the variation plus minus article that we saw in the older stages of community assembly but we see it also in, in other varieties of assembly for example in today's Luzerne Simia, so the variety that we can use. And here we have constructions without article, and we have constructions with article, and uh, both fit fine in this model. However, the important question is what is the justification for putting an article word in a demonstrative, in a position, in a demonstrative phrase? And, uh, my first argument is obviously Saviero's historical record. So he has this equation of the article, word, and symbol with the Italian demonstrative. The second argument is um, speaker judgments. Uh, speaker uh, judgments are available not for certain community symbol because today, as I said before, um, this variety is not spoken anymore, or at least um, there are not um, speakers which are so fluent that their data has uh, enough, um, is reliable enough for the speakers' judgments. So that's why I asked to uh, learn some speakers, and uh, they say that normal DPs in Simbian, in Luzern Simbian, they don't have an article. 2023a, your dog is without article. And um, your dog, so the simple, let's say, unmarked uh, VP, is incompatible with uh, uh, an article word. Whereas the article word uh, can be used if two processors are contrasted, like in the construction uh, 23c your dog barked all night not ours in this contrast uh, the article not only is possible but uh, we have to use the article word and since contrast is essential for demonstrative reference you know, this quote from Lyons book on definiteness um, we have another argument for assuming that the article word can be located in the demonstrative position and there's a third argument uh, which comes from standard German. It's true that in standard German, articles can't combine with um, possessive elements, but uh, demonstratives can. Uh, here we have a standard German construction that shows us that we can model standard German with the same tree structure. And here it's obvious that we have a demonstrative pronoun in this demonstrative position, in dieser, ihre Tochter. And the conclusion is that the article word in Simrin um, has been reanalyzed as a demonstrative. That's, that's my result. Time is almost over. Um, very quickly, uh, the conclusions on language contact effects. I want to say just three things. The first one is that language contact, in spite of what I've said before, has clearly an effect. I don't think that the article word in certain communities symbol would have been grammaticalized the way we saw without contact with Italian. 
because it's a fact that we have in Italian article word plus possessive plus head noun, and we have the same thing in similar article word plus possessive plus head noun. And we see alignment here on the surface. However, this surface alignment does not mean that there have been a change in what we can call a deep syntax. The structure of the Simian DP remains the same as it was in German and, as we have seen before, as it is in German, the It does not change. Second observation, we have also in Simian there is some structure alignment, which is not only surface, but this alignment is on a morphological level and um, more than on the syntactic level. Uh, and uh, one instance here is the reduction of agreement features of the processor in third person processes, because we have no gender and no number agreement feature in Italian, as you see in 24, and we have the same thing in Simrian, as you see in 25, you see this here in yellow, so just uh, third person processive, and I think this is a um, better replication in Simrian. And the last thing is that we also have um, developments, developments which are completely independent from the language contact, and an example here is the tendency towards the complete loss of uh, the head nouns agreement features in the processive element, uh, because in Italian, uh, we have here 24, we have agreement features, head noun agreement features, uh, in this case singular feminine. In German, we have uh, dative singular feminine, in Simbian, we don't have, we have this interruption of the agreement chain. And that's all. Thank you. I will pronounce this particularly. <laughs> <laughs>
things like videos or no. not? I think this is uh, since uh, roughly 20, maximum 20 years. Uh, yeah. 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 Maybe uh, a little bit less because it was a long way uh, to come to recognition of the minority minorities yeah. in Italy. Yeah. All together. Yeah. From, I don't know, from the 90s. Yeah, it's a lot from the 90s. Uh, which was then implemented um, or realized also with the necessary <coughs> money in the province of Trento at the beginning of the, the years 2000. So that's quite new. And uh, so the orthography is new, um, the use as a written language is new, very recent. And is the language still used by Cimbrian speakers really at home as, uh, you know, uh, uh, with children or is more Some, capitalized? Sometimes, sometimes. I think um, the communities do their best in order to preserve the language, but um, Italian is strong, and Italian does not mean only standard Italian, but also the regional varieties, so the northern, northern Italian uh, regional language, and also um, the dialects, the Italian dialects from the area. Yeah. Because in real facts, these areas are not only bilingual, but uh, if somebody speaks really similar, usually uh, this person is trilingual, trilingual with uh, Italian dialect, uh, standard Italian, and similar. Whereas usually they don't um, have any competence in standard German okay. in these areas. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit. Uh, they try to promote Cimbrian, but, um, but if you remember here on the vitality scale, I said it's much more helpful than Cimbrian in the southern and Fertile communities, but however, it's definitely in danger. It's not that it's out of danger because the numbers are very small. It's and on the long run, I don't think that. It can survive as the, the language of everyday communication, but this does not mean that there is no meaning anymore in the language, because if there is no instrumental usage anymore, there can be a lot of uh, symbolic function for the communities. Sure. Thank you. Another question? Yeah, no, come on. Um, I want to ask if there are German dialects, or if, if you know of German dialects outside Italy, um, which do the same, or would be interesting. Mm. Because, uh, I mean, another way to show that it's not Necessary contact uh, would be to show uh, look here. So it's 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 a difficult situation because, as I said, or my conclusion was that we have here this article work as a demonstrative. We we uh, analyzed as a demonstrative. A demonstrative, um, let's say, a bi-syllabic demonstrative is possible in modern standard German. But there is also um, the monosyllabic demonstrative. And it's difficult to distinguish then article from demonstrative. And there are attestations from older German, for example, um, uh, Middle High German, in which we have constructions like um, die seine Tochter, something like this. And uh, the interpretation, however, the interpretation already by there is a very influential syntax of German by Dehagel from the 1930s. And he interprets this article as a demonstrative already for Middle High German. So if you now run into a construction like this in German dialects, um, it could be something which is a remain from the past. But I repeat, I, I mean, 
Yeah, that's what, that's, that's what I, that was one of the questions I had. Uh, it's because you said that the article was reanalyzed as demonstrative. Historically, the article is a demonstrative, and it's kind of a re reanalysis when it's happening. Yes, uh, yes, that's true. But it's a re reanalysis because we have a situation in the first similar manifestations uh, in, at the beginning of the 17th century in which we don't have the situation in which the article, or it seems that the article, works really only as an article. And only later on, then, and I think this is the effect from Italian. Yeah, the article is used, but then it's used not as an Italian, not as an article, as an Italian. In Italian is really an article, but in the German structure, in which this is possible only if it becomes a demonstrative. That's that's the reason. I have a question. Um, thank you first for uh, thank you uh, for your talk. Um, it, it was very interesting and it gave me ideas on also Keynes' uh, 2000 concern about the inexistence of Lua in, in Roman uh, languages. So that was very interesting to see. But I am curious about uh, the possessy uh, classes, so the type of possessy nouns that we can find. That we can find. Have you seen some kind of variation according whether we have a kinship term or body part term or any other type no, of semantics? No, not at all. In this um, questionnaire here, uh, my final, final stage, there are actually a lot of <coughs> terms. For example, daughter. And we saw this, this example uh, with the daughter that we saw several times is from this question. And this is with art. And that's something which is different from, let's say, many Italian dialects. Uh, it's, it's a problem because there are Italian dialects in which we also have uh, the article in all, also with kinship terms, and there are other dialects in which we don't have the article at all. But in, in this area here, uh, the situation on a dialect level is more or less the same that we see in standard Italian. So this means that we have more article usage here in Cymbrian than in the surrounding Italian dialects. So there's no, does not depend on, let's say, the class of the possessive of the element, whether it's a kinship, kinship term. Mm -hmm. so it's a, but I think this is also not so surprising, it's a generalization. In Italian, we have this differentiation. In Cymbrian, there is just, so this is, Category does not exist because it's an Italian category, and so we don't see it, not even in this context here. This is also strong evidence for so the yeah. contactless. For the yeah, for the resistance. Yes, the inertia. On a deeper level, so on the surface level, yes, but if we go deeper, then we see that the that simply remains essentially a Germanic or German. This is very interesting. And also, one other curiosity. Um, if we look at the construction with diese, uh, eine Tochter, am I right? Yes. Um, how can we modify the noun, say, for example, with an adjective? Can I say diese schöne, eine Tochter, or diese, eine schöne Tochter? Meine, diese, meine Tochter. Meine or eine? Eine. Eine. So, indefinite article. Oh, no, 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 M meine. So, yeah, with the... With, uh, with the Diese process. meine schöne Tochter. Ist Diese possible. meine schöne Tochter. Diese meine, so um, after the process. Okay. And Diese schöne meine Tochter, uh, it's impossible. Okay. Yeah, was just to, to think if we can put some adjunct or some modification somehow. Don't. Yeah, yeah, but just as a test. Thank you very much. Thank you.